regular session of the 61st Idaho State Legislature is now underway. Our legislators are attending committee meetings and hearings and uh, introducing legislation that affects various agencies and departments of state. To, the subject for today's program is centered around the Idaho Land Bureau by, excuse me, the Idaho Land Board. By way of background, when Idaho was admitted to the Union as a 43rd state in 1890, it was granted approximately 3,672,000 acres of land for the support of state institutions. The land was granted under the condition that it be managed in perpetuity as a trust for the beneficiary institutions. The mandate was codified in Article 9, Section 8 of the Idaho Constitution, which states that the land must be managed in such manner as will secure the maximum long-term financial return to the institution to which granted. Chief among the beneficiaries are the public schools, which receive two sections of every township in the state or one-eighteenth of the total land base. Other institutions include the University of Idaho, the Agricultural College, the Normal Schools, Penitentiary, Charitable Institutions, State Hospital South, School of Science, and Public Buildings, which is, includes now the Capitol. My guest today is no stranger to the legislative process and has been working with a group of private citizens along with legislators from both sides of the aisle who have come together to address concerns about how the endowment funds are being invested. Robert M. Foy was a legislator from Canyon County in the mid-1980s, mid I guess, mm -hmm. and served during the Reagan administration um, from Canyon County. Welcome to the program, Bob. Thank you, Liz. Well, um, most people, when they talk about uh, the land board, I get it, just this blank look, the land board, <laughs> you know, what's that? So let's start off by, by letting people know what the land board is, who sits on it, and what their chief uh, goals are. Okay, uh, you're correct. The uh, as Idaho was admitted as a state and received, or they were granted uh, 6.3 million acres to use for endowments. Um, the main one is for schools so that uh, the tax base wouldn't have to be so high and they could use the endowment, the, the profits that came off of the rental, uh, leasing, and sale of lands to go into a permanent endowment fund. That fund cannot be spent. It's a, it's a locked box. It can be invested. The funds can be invested. And the schools, the endowment then, can be uh, given the, uh, the interest, and that uh, goes to support the schools. Uh, the Constitution uh, designates uh, the governor, superintendent of public instruction, secretary of state, attorney general, state controller, shall constitute the state board of land commissioners who shall have the direction, control, and disposition of the public lands of the state under such regulations as may be prescribed by law. So the legislature has a say in what the land board uh, does because uh, they work under the prescription of law passed mm -hmm. by our legislators. Now, the land that was granted is where we're beginning to get into problems. The land board for a year, many years in Idaho, uh, just invested the, the money in the land that was granted, uh, took the money that was uh, from that those lands. Recently, though, in the last 10 or 12 years, the land board has a change of philosophy. Now they've decided they must go into the commercial business world. They want to compete with private enterprise. And I see that as a, a, as a major problem, and I think it's unconstitutional. And has anyone asked for, well, of course, you, did you say the attorney general sits on the board as well? Yes, he's a board member. So has anybody asked him his opinion as to whether that's a conflict or... Well, yes, and he says it is not a, con a conflict. But uh, if I might just read one uh, point here out of sure. the Constitution to prove that. It shall be the duty of the State Board of Land Commissioners to provide for the location, protection, sale, or rental of all the lands heretofore or which may hereafter be granted to or acquired by the state from the general government. Now, the land board has control over the lands that were granted from the general government, uh, the general government, the federal government. Mm -hmm. uh, they did not grant uh, storage units 
The land board, though, ha has bought one. Uh, they, uh, they were not granted a list of other properties in downtown Boise, Central Washington Place, affordable storage, uh, the property at 512 Bannock, Capitol Park Plaza, the Garrow Building next to the old Hotel Boise, Sherm Perry Building, the Home Federal Bank Building, uh, Travis Jeffries, the Collins House. These are, are all owned by the state now? Those are all owned by the state. And they're uh, some, most of them, no, not most of them, some of them are, are virtually empty. The vacancy rate is, uh, uh, is pretty high. And they also have uh, eight parking lots downtown. Uh, all of these properties are taking, taken off of the tax roll. So the... Uh, Wait, now, help me understand, Bob. Okay, so the land board has over $3 million, which they, or excuse me, 3 million acres over which they have control. That's good. Well, what they, they manage. did when they, when they started. I think it's down to about $2.7 million now. They have sold, and that was the idea. When Idaho became a state, uh, looking back uh, to the uh, uh, convention minutes, when, mm -hmm. when the legislature, uh, the founders of Idaho met, uh, they wanted people to come to Idaho. There wasn't much here then, of course. And uh, so they decided, we'll allot any one person to uh, claim uh, and file on 320 acres. Uh, we want a lot of people to come here, develop that land, put it into production to, uh, to start uh, uh, the economy growing and get a tax base. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, that was the reason that they granted that land. And, uh, is, th now, so they is have this sold tax off. free, the land? Are, are there taxes being paid on the land? Uh, uh, no. Well, the, the land, a lot of that land was sold so people could farm it and ranch it. Okay. And that was fine. But... Uh, uh, the land now that they still manage, uh, manage is is not taxable. The uh, the Garrow building that was pays my no question. taxes. Okay, okay. The uh, the parking right. lots they pay no taxes. The uh, affordable storage, 414 storage units, they pay no taxes. That's off of the tax rolls. So the income from the storage goes to the state. Uh, it goes into the endowment fund. Into, into, into the, the land, endowment to the fund, not board. to the general fund. Right. Okay, and. So then my question is, if these are owned by the state, do the people who run these different businesses, are they considered state employees? Or no, Because it sounds like private businesses, and yet... They're, they're private businesses. They're leasing the buildings and the properties from the state. Okay. So the state okay. is basically a huge realtor. Uh, I suspect in time, if, if we don't get this stopped, the state will become the largest real estate agent <laughs> in, the, in the state, okay. or the land board will. But uh, now the, the, the problem that we're having, the, the, the Constitution also says that these lands must be managed in such a manner as will secure the maximum long-term financial return. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we all think that uh, any manager would, would do that, and, and I expect them to do that, mm -hmm. but not to enter into the... A commercial business in competition with the uh, the businessman or woman who has put forth their own capital and uh, and have to operate a business and pay taxes in competition with the government that they pay taxes to support. They're in in a sense they're supporting their competition. Here's a, another question that I have: From where do they get the money to purchase these buildings and? Uh, many of them, I think, have been uh, the, have been traded. Uh, the The Constitution says that the land board can exchange these granted lands for other lands, okay. and so uh, what they've done in some cases is traded some lake lots with cabins on them around Payet Lake and Priest Lake for a bank building or for a, some other a okay. parking lot or. Some well, when we business. come back from the break, let's let's explain that a little bit more because you're talking about cabins now, and that's a little bit okay. confusing. We'll be right back.